Hello everybody and welcome back to the first episode, well I wouldn't say welcome back, I said welcome to the new and improved Train Simone 5 Phys- um, all of that, I was just aware of what I was about to say physics, but uh, yes, um, they have included some- oh never mind, now it's gone. This is literally the starting point and I'm kind of messing up already even though this is literally the first episode and it's just an introductory episode, I mean, for crying out loud, why am I stressing all too much? Wait, as a rule, you want to aim below 30 mph when you reach the start of a platform. Uh, really happened. Yep, that's that. That's the company. Oh, uh, the the intro just vanished. Yep. So yep, this is all new. Yep. Um, they spelled sensor wrong as always, which is obviously just typical. But yes. Anyways, uh, hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of the uh, Train Symbol 5 series. Once the Train Symbol 4, now we've moved on to 5. I mean, same, it's same thing except the fact um, everything's been positioned. I've uh, had the first hour um, doing some stuff and effectively got all of my DLC, which I have no idea why, which is the reason why I'd be better be off of the deluxe edition. But yes, that was the plan. So anyway, um, today's video, um, well, uh, well, well, looking at the title, it's this today. This is a one whole episode of me just doing all of these things because I'm gonna start this all over again and all of that. In fact, uh, let, let's go through it slowly. So, what that? Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's that. Oh, I haven't done that yet. Whoa. And then cruise control. Yep. Then we have 6P. Yep. Yep. And yep. Now, for this one, um, because this is all introductions and this is just purely on introductions, I will not have me, I, you will not be able to hear because I just want people to find uh, this video helpful, to be honest. So, I will right now uh, put me mic to off so you can hear the whoever's talking properly for the time being. Um, and also you can't yeah, the best thing is that you can't hear my PC that often. Um, so yes, uh, we'll just start. So let's just, uh, I will I will be back talking at, at like after I'm done with everything, which will take a bit. So let's start with the first one. Embarking on a new career is always exciting. Today you're joining the list of people who work on the railways, keeping the world's people and cargo running smoothly. There's a lot to learn, but you'll be taking it step by step. Let's start by looking around. Find each of the markers and look at them. Before you get to the trains, take a quick tour of the facility here and learn the basics of moving around on foot. Your current objective is shown in the top left of the screen. You've just been awarded some action points. These are displayed in the top right corner of the screen and count towards your overall experience level for the game. This is one of the many route tasks you can discover. Keep an eye out for other tasks that will ask you to place, collect or fix a variety of things. Head into the main building to continue your induction. Walk over to the waiting area on the right. Let's take a seat for a minute. You can pause at any point to review objectives and a lot of other information about what's happening at the moment. Try it now and then return to the game after you've had a look round.
Now that you've covered some of the basics of moving around and interacting with the environment, let's take a walk through the building and find the trains. This is Central Square. From here you can explore the main training center depot and surrounding yards. Your journey operating trains is just getting started here at the training center. Remember, you can always come back here from the main menu to refresh your knowledge if you're unsure about anything. In this training module, you'll learn about the on-screen overlay known as the heads-up display, or HUD. You'll see it when you're in control of a train. You can configure a range of parameters for the HUD that affect how it looks in the game settings. In this tutorial, you're going to take a look at the two main types of HUD and make a first choice of which one you prefer. Get started by climbing up the ladder into this train and sit in the indicated drive. Welcome to the most important seat in the train. Before you can start learning how to make the train move, you're going to need to understand what the HUD is telling you. There are three types of HUD. The one you're seeing now is the normal HUD. You'll learn that first, and then take a look at the minimal HUD next. There is also a simple HUD, which is essentially a cut-down version of the normal HUD. The HUD is a guide to show you what the train is doing, how you're doing, and what your next objectives are. You can tune what's shown here using the game settings. The main part of the normal HUD is the speed display in the bottom right. Your current speed is indicated by a white bar that will appear on the outside of the speedometer and there is a red mark that indicates the maximum permitted speed. This is the direction display. An arrow will indicate the forward, reverse and neutral directions. A cross or X means the reverse is currently either not inserted or in the off position. This is the power display. A number will indicate what position the power or throttle control is in. If the display is white, it refers to power. If the display is yellow, it means powered braking or dynamic braking. If the display is red, then the throttle is currently locked out and you will need to take steps to release the lock before power can be applied. You can learn about troubleshooting elsewhere in Training Center. These are the brake indicators. The exact one shown will vary by train and will often be visible in the train itself on the various gauges. These gauges tell you what is happening in the braking system. The most important one is the BC or brake cylinder. In most trains when this reads zero that means the brakes are released, anything else and the brakes are applied. In the top right is the track monitor. This shows you the line ahead and allows you to see all the signals and speed limit changes that you're approaching. By default, the track monitor shows the signals with their actual red, yellow or green aspect. But when you get more confidence, you can hide this information via an option in the game settings. As you accelerate, the track monitor will extend its look ahead distance so you can see much further ahead at higher speeds. This is all done automatically. Now that you're familiar with the normal HUD, it's time to take a look at the minimal HUD. You can change this via the game settings, but for this tutorial the game will change it automatically. You can see that most of the HUD is now gone. You are left with basic information in the top left corner. The minimal HUD immerses you in the experience of driving the train. Use the train's real gauges as much as possible. 
In the top left corner, you will see the information about your next objective and some limited information about what the train is doing, such as your current speed, the speed limit and the gradient. Use the game settings to add and remove information from the minimal HUD. With less information, you'll find driving more challenging, but also more immersive and rewarding. Experienced players might prefer the minimal HUD, especially when driving from the cab view. The normal HUD is ideal for newcomers or anyone who wants to drive from an external camera. You can switch HUDs in game settings. Do you want to start with the normal HUD or minimal HUD? That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you're going to learn how to make a train move and then bring it to a stop. For this exercise, you'll be using a British Class 323 electric multiple unit. It's a great train to get started with as the controls are quite straightforward. This module will get you used to the feel of the train and its controls. While many trains have different controls and are operated in different ways, there are basically always three controls that are common and are required to move the train. The reverser chooses the direction you're going to move in. It often has four positions, off, forward, neutral and reverse. The brakes are used to slow or stop the train. There are potentially multiple braking systems you can find in different trains and you can read more about that in other sections of the training center. For now, the class 323 has a very simple braking system. The throttle controls how fast the train accelerates. In this train, the throttle and brakes are controlled by a combined power and brake handle. Moving the handle in one direction will apply power. The middle position is neutral and does nothing and then the other range applies the brakes. You will find in some other trains that the throttle and brakes are on separate handles. Before you go any further, set the headlights for daytime running and ensure the tail lights are off. Now pull the combined power and brake handle towards you to release the brakes and apply power. In the top left, the accelerometer shows you how fast you're speeding up or slowing down. Now that you've reached your target speed, you can move the throttle control back to the center position. The train will then coast on level ground and only slow down very gradually. When it comes to stopping trains, the specifics of each train can be quite different. However, the basic process is fundamentally the same. Bring this train to a complete stop by moving the... The amount of braking you will need to apply also varies depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill and how heavy your train is. Knowing the right amount to apply will come with practice and experience. 
stopping a train is one of the biggest challenges of controlling it, particularly stopping it in the right place. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you'll be learning basic passenger operations in this Class 323 electric multiple unit. This part of the training center is the Metro Loop. It is used primarily for driver training for passenger trains that are generally shorter or might stop more frequently in normal operating practice. It consists of two platforms. In this module, we'll be doing a complete circuit and practicing stopping at both stations. When you're ready, open the door and climb aboard the train. To unlock the control desk, insert the master key and activate it. Turn the coach lighting on so that passengers aren't boarding a dark train. In order to use the buttons in the cab, you must first insert and then turn the door key to the on position. As the platform is on your left, press the open door's left button. The weather has turned quite bad, so you'll need to turn the wipers on. The cab light is currently on. Make sure to turn it off. It's useful to find your way around in the cab, but can make it hard to see out of the window, so you should always turn it off before you start moving. Headlights in the UK are used to allow others to see the train rather than being of great use to the driver seeing out. Set the headlights for daytime running and ensure the tail lights are off. While the passenger doors are open and the loading objective completes, you'll notice the bar in the top left slowly rising. Once it reaches the top, the objective will complete and it will be time to close the doors. Now the passengers have boarded the train, close and lock the doors using the close left doors button. Set the reverser to forward. Apply some power to get moving. You're approaching the next station. Use the power brake handle to apply power so that you come to a gentle stop at the indicated marker on the platform. This platform is on the right, so you'll need to use the open right doors button to unlock and open the doors this time. 
Once again, observe the objective indicator on the HUD to tell you when it is completed. Use the doors close right button to close and lock the doors. Drive the train to the next platform without any further guidance and see how you get on. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you will be learning about the various camera controls and how to get the best views. You can drive from in the cab or an exterior camera. Exterior views are particularly useful for coupling and uncoupling. Currently, you're in the cab of this Class 323 EMU with the same view a real driver would have. Before experimenting with camera views, set the train up correctly as if ready for departure. We will now explore the camera controls. To get back inside the cab, a different key must be pressed. Do that now. Now that you're used to interior and exterior, switch back to the exterior view again to learn more about it. From the exterior, you can move the camera around. Use the keys indicated along with your mouse to move and turn the camera. If the mouse pointer is moving but your view doesn't change, right-click the mouse to turn on camera mode. Spend a minute just practicing moving and turning the external camera.
You can zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. Try it now. While in an external camera, you can also interact with some elements such as junctions. You'll be learning about junctions properly in a different training module. But for now, fly over to the indicated junction and change it by interacting with it using the controls indicated. There's a lot more to learn about cameras, including numerous other camera modes. You can find out more in other areas of the training center. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this module, you'll combine everything you learned from the moving a train, passenger operations and camera controls modules, but from outside the train. Now you'll have the freedom to enjoy external cameras while driving the train. Before you go any further, get the lighting all set up correctly. You can activate the master key by pressing the indicated keys. Now press the keys indicated to set the reverser to forwards. Just as with other modules, you're currently sitting in a class 323 multiple unit. You must now switch to the exterior camera. If you need a reminder on how to do this, head over to the camera controls module first and have a quick refresher. Aside from the magnificent views, exterior camera views can make it easier to complete tasks such as coupling, checking your lights and changing junctions. Only a small number of the most common functions are usable for an exterior camera. If you find you need to do something that isn't available, simply switch to the internal camera to do it and then switch back. Finally, press the key indicated to apply some power. There are two keys, one to add more throttle and one to take throttle away. Experiment. Now that you've moved down the track, it's time to bring the train to a stop. Use the keys indicated to adjust the power brake handle to apply some brakes.
Try restarting this tutorial and running it a few times until you're comfortable with driving from the outside, including moving the camera around. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you'll be learning how to shut down a cab and change ends of the train so that you can drive in the other direction. You'll bring this unit back to Central Square sidings. You'll need to change ends a couple of times. Don't worry about how the train is going to get there though, all the paths are going to be set for you. You just need to change ends and then drive when you're given instruction to do so. Get started by setting this cab up for operation. Set the headlights for daytime operation and ensure the tail lights are off. Set the reverser to forwards, as that's the direction you'll be going. The first move brings the train forwards to the junction around the corner from here, and you'll be stopping once the rear of the train has cleared it. Apply some power and drive forward a bit so that we can prove that this cab is working and the train moves as expected. That's far enough. Bring the train to a stop by applying some brake using the power brake handle. Now that the train has stopped, you need to shut this cab down. Turn off the headlights and ensure the tail lights are on. Set the reverser to off. Remove the master key. This cab is now shut down. Walk over to the other end of the train, ensuring to close any doors behind you. Sit in the driver's seat. Follow the steps indicated to activate this cab, repeating the procedure that you did when you set up the previous cab. Now that the cab is active, wait for the yard controller to give us permission to proceed forward once they've checked and blocked all the junctions for us. You're good to go. Apply some power and get moving. Your next destination is going to take you to the left and into the switch lines west of the training center.
Follow the steps indicated to deactivate this cab. Now that the cab is active, wait for the yard controller to give us permission to proceed forward once they've checked and locked all the junctions for us. You're good to go. Apply some power and get moving. Your final destination is going to take you to the central square sidings right next to the main building. Before you finish, take a moment to review. When changing cabs on almost any train, there are some common things to double check before you depart the cab you're finished with. What position have you left the throttle and brake controls in? What position is the reverser in? Are the headlights and taillights set up correctly for what will become the rear of the train? Are all doors closed? Once you get used to each train you operate, you'll quickly begin to remember what each one needs and get used to the elements that are common between different trains. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you'll be learning about the live 2D map and how it can help you understand where you are, where your objective is, and how you can change the path of the train to get to the right place. Under normal circumstances, the driver has little, if anything, to do with where a train is going. It's all handled centrally by a signaling center or dispatcher. Within yards and depots, however, you will find that these are often managed by the crew of the train directly. That means you. You can tell whether a junction is manual or automatic by looking at it. If it has no big lever, then it's automatic and you can't influence it. If it does, then interacting with that lever will change the junction. For this module, you'll take this class 323 from the siding here next to the main loops and set all the junctions yourself to direct the train to the switch lines and then change ends and repeat the process to bring the train into the depot. Your destination has been set over in the switch lines on the far west of the training center. Use the map to follow the path from the train to the destination and change all the junctions you need to get there. If you make a mistake and go the wrong way, you can go back and try to correct it. If you're not ready for that, just restart the module and try again.
you've made it to the first destination. Go ahead and change ends in the train and you can try one more time for practice. Once again, use the map to adjust the junctions between your train and the destination. Where the black lines on the 2D map aren't aligned with the blue path, change the junction. When you're ready, get moving. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you're going to learn to drive a diesel electric locomotive and how the controls differ from a multiple unit. This is a BR Class 66 diesel electric locomotive typically used for freight operations in the United Kingdom. In some trains, it is first necessary to insert the reverser handle. We need to do that on this one. We want to move the train forwards, so move the reverser in that direction. The train brake on the Class 66 uses a sprung lever. Holding it one way will gradually release the brakes until you release the lever. Holding it the other will gradually apply the brakes. You need to keep an eye on the two brake gauges in front of you. The larger one in the middle is the brake pipe. The outside needle shows the target pressure and the inside needle shows the actual pressure. When you apply or release the brakes, the outer needle moves and the onboard control systems will begin to adjust the brakes to match your setting. You can make a change to the brakes and focus on the road ahead while the system works to match the pressure you've set. The second gauge of note is the brake cylinder gauge, which is the second from the left. This tells you exactly what is happening with the brakes on the two sets of wheels on the locomotive. If the needles are raised to a V shape, that means they are fully applied. When the needles are both pointing directly down, the brakes on the locomotive will be fully released. You can learn more about braking systems elsewhere in the training center. But for now, you just need to remember that you are directly controlling the outer needle on the brake pipe gauge and that the end result is shown on the brake cylinder gauge. Keep the brake control in release until you can see the brake pipe control needle is reading 5 bar, pointing upwards. This will release the brakes fully. Watch the brake cylinder gauge to see it gradually reduce to 0.0, .0. needles pointing downwards, which tells you that the brakes are now fully released on the locomotive and you can move the train. It's important to note that the brake cylinder gauge is only telling you what's happening on your locomotive. If you have wagons attached, they can take a little longer to release. 
so if the train doesn't move immediately, don't worry. Apply some throttle to get the train moving. As you apply power, notice the ammeter rising, the gauge on the right hand side with the coloured sections. This is the amount of power being fed into the traction motors. Try to keep it in the green section, only briefly in the yellow, and avoid the red section to avoid damaging your traction motors. Now that you've reached your target speed, you can move the throttle control back to zero. The train will then coast on level ground and the train will only slow down very gradually. That's far enough, bring this train to a complete stop by holding the brake control in the apply state until you see the brake pipe control needle in the center of your cab desk showing about 4 bar. The amount of braking you'll need to apply also varies depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill and how heavy your train. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you'll be learning about changing ends with a locomotive. Many types of locomotives have two cabs in order to make them as versatile as possible. While the cabs are often virtually identical, they are often referred to as either the A and B ends, number one or two end, or simply their front and back. Usually the designation of the cab is written somewhere in the cab. In the case of the class 66, it's above the window on the right hand side. In this case, you can see you're in the number one cab. All the junctions will be set for you in this module. You'll just be focusing on the locomotive. First, get the train moving forwards and drive over to the indicated stop marker and come to a stop in the platform somewhere. Okay, let's change ends. The basic process is always the same. Shut down the cab you're in and set up a new cab. Each cab has slightly different requirements to shut it down and set it up, however. 
Start by setting the reverser back to neutral. Now remove the reverser. Removing the reverser has automatically applied the brakes on the locomotive, so you don't need to worry about what happens when you change ends or what position to leave the train brake in. On this locomotive and on some others, you also need to make sure to put the locomotive brake in the release position when you're ready to switch cabs. If you don't, the controls in the other cab won't be able to release the brake. Before you move to the other cab, set the tail lights on and turn the headlights off. If you've used cab light or desk lights, turn those off too. Head to the other cab. You'll need to leave the train and get back on board at the other end. While some trains allow you to walk from cab to cab internally, it's often hot and uncomfortable. Notice that this end shows that you're in camp number two with the writing above the right-hand window. Get the cab set up as per normal and then pull forward to the marker in the other siding and come to a stop anywhere in there. Don't worry. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this trading module, you'll move some mineral wagons to a new location and learn how to couple and uncouple the wagons to your locomotive. All junctions are going to be changed automatically for you in this tutorial, so you can focus on driving. The mineral wagons are located ahead of us. Start by pulling gently forwards until you touch the wagons and stop. This will take some practice as it requires a lot more fine control. You'll find the locomotive brake is easier and more responsive. Take your time. If you hit the wagons too hard, they might come off the track, so try and be gentle and aim for 2 miles per hour or under as you touch them. You may also prefer the external camera to give more visibility, particularly as you get close to the wagons.
next step is to couple up. You can either do this by using the external camera or by getting out and doing it by hand. In this tutorial, you'll learn both techniques so you can decide which one you prefer. There are many types of couplers on the railways. In this case, you've got conventional UK chain couplings, which simply need you to put the loop over the hook on the other vehicle. In the sim, you can do this by simply interacting with the coupler when you see the appropriate prompt. Apply the emergency brake with the emergency brake plunger. This will empty all air out of the brake pipe and prevent the brake pipe from overcharging as you couple to the wagons. You'll do this one by getting out of the train. Leave the cab and walk over to the coupling. Interact with the coupling to couple the vehicles together. Now head back to the cab. Unset the emergency brake plunger to restore the brakes. Then you'll need to shut this cab down and change ends. Follow the instructions here or check out the training module that covers changing cabs in more detail. Set up the train while you wait for the yard manager to give you the all clear to reverse into the siding once they've changed the junctions required. Junction set, you're clear to go. Now pull the train forward and notice how the brake pipe responds more slowly as you release the brakes. You'll feel your train taking more time to respond. It will also feel sluggish as it has extra weight behind it. Take this into consideration as you drive, noting that it now takes longer to speed up and, more importantly, longer to slow down. like you're good to go. Drive the train back into the siding now. Apply the emergency brake with the emergency brake plunger again. This time, use the external camera for the uncoupling operation. Switch to the external camera now. Fly the camera over to the coupling we want to uncouple. In this case, the one between your locomotive and the first wagon. 
Once you get close enough, interact with it as normal and it will uncouple. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you'll be learning about vehicles called control cars or cab cars. In the UK, they're often called driving van, trailer or DVT cars, and you will likely come across other names for them too. The name cab cart will be used for the rest of this module to keep it simple. Cab cars are essentially a passenger coach with a driving cab in them, but most importantly, they have no means of propulsion themselves. There are no engines or motors, so they can't move under their own power. The way that a cab car works is it will remotely control a locomotive at the other end of the train, and this is where it's important to understand their behavior as being a little different to the cab experience of the locomotive itself. There may be a little lag in control response, and you may not quite have the same instrument outputs as you do in the locomotive itself. For this module, you'll be taking this German Doppelstock cab car, which has a BR146.2 locomotive at the other end setting it up and then driving it forwards to a marker at the other end of the yard area. Revisit this module a couple of times to try different things out and get familiar with the subtle difference when driving from the cab car. One of the biggest and most obvious differences when driving from the cab car is it does a lot less sound. Since all the motors and fans are at the other end of the train, it can be a little disconcerting at first. Engage the brake system by turning this key. Put the reverser in forwards. Turn on the headlights. Ensure the doors are closed. Release the brakes and apply some power to get moving. It feels a little odd at first. All the audio cues you're used to in the cab aren't present here, so you just need to give the locomotive time to react to your commands. Experiment with some power and some brakes and see how the train reacts. You may find some sharp jolts happening because of how the slack is being bunched up or stretched out by the loco at the back. You can minimize this by making your first power or brake applications lighter and then increasing them. You'll get used to this with practice and experience. Cut the power and coast the rest of the way.
This is just a brief introduction to cab cars. The changing ends for cab cars training module goes into more depth about both the cab car and the BR146.2 locomotive on the other end of the train. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you'll practice going between the BR146.2 locomotive at one end of the train and the cab car at the other. All the junctions are being taken care of for you by another team member, allowing you to focus on driving. You're starting here in a siding near the main loop. Get started by climbing in. Insert the reverser handle and set the reverser to forward. Set the headlights to bright and the back wall set the signal lights to headlights. Release the brakes and apply power to get moving towards the marker. Stop anywhere here by applying the brakes. It's time to get the locomotive cab shut down. Move the train brake handle to the full service position. Set the reverser to off and remove the reverser handle. That will deactivate the cab. On the back wall, change the signal lights to tail lights so that the locomotive shows red lights now that it's at the rear of the train. With the cab shut down, you can move to the other end of the train Exit the cab and walk along the side of the train to the cab car. Don't forget to close the door before you leave. Open 
a passenger door on the cab car to get in and make your way to the cab and sit in the driver's seat. You now need to get this cab set up. Start by turning the brake key to activate the brakes. Insert the reverser handle and set the reverser to forward. Set the headlights to high beams and on the back wall set the signal lights to headlights. Check if there are any doors open and if so, close them. You're good to go. Release the brakes, apply the power and take the train out. You're headed out onto the main line and will be stopping at the main station on the loop.
concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you're going to learn how the German AFB cruise control system works. Many German trains use this type of cruise control and much of the fundamentals you learn here will apply to other trains that have some equivalent form of cruise control. It's important to note that there are fundamentally two types of cruise control. One is an active system like AFB which will manage your speed positively using throttle and brake as needed. The other is a speed set system which is useful for setting a maximum speed. Speed set could usually maintain your speed, but can't reduce it as easily as a system like AFB. For this exercise, you'll be doing two laps of the main loop here at the training center. The first time around, you'll be learning how to set up AFB and use it from standstill. The second time, you'll learn how to enable AFB while your train is already running. Set up the train, but don't start moving yet. Turn the AFB system on. AFB, AFB, AFB. You can now set the target cruise speed using the AFB lever. Set it to 40 km per hour for now. Release the brakes and apply power. As the train accelerates, you can apply more power as needed. The train has reached its cruise target and has cut power. It will now manage the speed as needed automatically. You can leave the power handle with the power applied, and this grants the amount of power available for AFB to use. Increase the AFB lever to 80 km per hour and watch the train accelerate to the new target.
increase the AFB lever back to 40 km per hour and see the train will manage itself back to 40 km per hour. Coming back to the platform, so set the throttle to off and get on the brakes as needed to come to a stop somewhere in the station. Getting AFB running while stationary is quite straightforward, but sometimes you may want to activate it while you're on the move without having to stop. Set the AFB lever to RFB, off and turn RFB, the AFB switch RFB. to off so that we can try that exercise next. Activate. 
activate the AFB switch to turn AFB on. AFB, AFB, AFB. Move the AFB lever to 80 km per hour so it can speed up. Finally, apply some power. Notice that we're now accelerating and if all has gone well, you'll see the power cut out around the 80 km per hour mark as AFB is managing your speed. Pretend there's a signal restriction coming up ahead and we need to apply the brakes. Use the brake lever to bring the train down to around 40 km per hour and then release the brakes. Notice how even though the cruise control is set to 80 km per hour still and power is applied, it's still not accelerating. This is because the brake application caused a throttle lockout. To reset it, you need to put the power back to off and then reapply it. Accelerating back up to 80 km per hour. Headed back to the station again, so bring the throttle to off and use your brakes to bring the train to a stop in the platform.
It is important to remember that a cruise control system like this is no substitute for the driver paying attention and remaining responsible for the train. Cruise control systems also cannot be relied upon to slow the train at an appropriate rate when approaching red signals or speed reductions, so you should be ready to use your brakes as needed. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you'll be learning the basics of operating a steam locomotive. You'll be driving this Stania Class 8F steam locomotive. When you're ready, I'm onto the footplate. Sit in the driver's position. Start by preparing the locomotive for departure. The reverser determines the direction of travel and how much steam is consumed as the locomotive moves. Set the reverser to full forward position. You will need all available power when setting off. This locomotive has a combination brake that controls both steam and vacuum brakes. Steam brakes will apply on just the locomotive. Vacuum brakes will apply to the rest of the train so long as it is equipped with vacuum brakes. The brakes are released when a vacuum is created. The driver can use the brake handle to destroy the vacuum which will start to apply the brakes. To create a vacuum, you should use the ejectors. The small ejectors should be left open when the train is running. The large ejector can be used to more quickly increase the vacuum after coupling or heavy braking. When the locomotive has been left standing, you'll want to open the cylinder cocks or remove any water. Water in the cylinders can damage the locomotive as it doesn't compress like steam. Move the combination brake to the release position and then use the large ejector as needed to get the brakes released. On an uphill start, you may want to apply a little power with the regulator first to prevent rollback. Don't forget to put the large ejector back to off when the brakes are off. The regulator acts like the throttle control for steam locomotives. It controls how much steam is delivered into the cylinders. Applying too much power too early can cause wheel slip, so increase it slowly. After a few wheel rotations, the cylinder should have been...
suspension brake to apply some braking force and bring... That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back at any time via the training center. In this training module, you'll be learning basic passenger operations in a Stanninger 8F steam locomotive. When you're ready, set up the locomotive for driving. When a vacuum is created, this will release the brakes. The driver can use the brake handle to destroy the vacuum, which will start to apply the brakes. To create a vacuum, you should use the ejectors. This locomotive has been left standing, so you'll need to open the cylinder cocks to remove any water. Slowly open the regulator to apply some power. Power delivery is delayed in a steam locomotive, and applying too much power too early can cause wheel slip. Starting to pick up speed. Move the reverser to forwards 25%. This reduces the amount of steam let into the cylinders and saves energy. work. To allow passengers to board, you'll need to open the doors. 
keep the doors open to allow enough time for passengers to board the train. Now the passengers have boarded the train, close the doors. Now let's go to the next stop. Once the wheels have rotated a few times with the cylinder cocks open, you should close them to preserve steam. work. This time, open the doors on the opposite side. Close the doors. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. In this training module, you will learn how to refill the Stonia Atef locomotive with water and coal. In this steam locomotive, the water and coal needed for operation are stored behind the cab in what's known as a tender. Firstly, you'll need to prepare the locomotive to receive water. Walk over to the water crane and move the water hose over the rear of the locomotive's tender.
Now the hose is in position, climb up the tender and open the water hatch. Insert the hose into the tender tank once the water hatch is open. Great. The hose is in and the tender tank is ready to be filled. Climb down the ladder and turn on the water to start filling the tender tank. The tender tank is now full. Turn off the water and bring the hose back to the water. Now you need to fill the tender with coal. Move the train so that the tender is underneath the coal tower. As soon as your tender is suitably positioned, it will automatically begin refilling. Got this locomotive fully fueled and ready for service. Great work. That concludes this module. If you wish to replay it, you can come back to it at any time via the training center. Well, that's all of the introductions uh, from what I find. Um, I mean, there are. I mean, there's all 17 introductions for the training center. And they still spelt it wrong, but it doesn't really matter. So now one thing to end the video, well, end this thing is like, try to make a screenshot, which I am not familiar with, with these new functions. Um, I would want, what, above freezing, uh, yeah, I'll, let's go with that. 10 o'clock. June, please. Um, I want, I want that normal as always. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to mess with that. That's gonna go a bit more. What's this? The sepia effect. No, I, I'm not gonna mess with that. So this is this is probably our screenshot of the day. If I start first one, I'm just gonna leave it like that. So yes, um, next episode, um, we'll probably like, um. We'll start with a, a US one. I mean, we haven't uploaded that much US content for a bit, so, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it got, uh, gave us another award thingy. And it's back to normal, so, thanks for watching. Hope you find this all useful. Cheerio!